What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is John. Today I have for you a convenience good. That's right, today we're going to be taking a look at the Apple AirPods Max I picked up using Apple's website for $5.49. On Apple's website, these don't get any stars or any customer reviews, but they do come in five different colorways. Space Gray, which we have in front of us here today, Silver, Green, Sky Blue, and Pink. You can also get a free additional engraving on the side of these headphones if you decide you want to have them shipped to your front door. Unfortunately, Apple does not offer an engraving option at the store. Yeah, today we're gonna to be doing an unboxing and a first impressions. The day AirPods Max came out, I had one question. Are these basically an evolution of the Beats by Dr. Dre? You might be thinking to yourself, well, John, these look nothing like the Beats by Dr. Dre, but as we all know, Apple did purchase the Beats by Dr. Dre brand. The Beats by Dr. Dre about five or six years ago were the most popular headphone on the market. They eventually came out with a wireless pair. They came in about four or five different colors, just like the AirPods Max do. And they cost about $350. That's if you went for the uh, Beats Studio or the Pro version. The Pro version, I believe, was about $450. That being said, I think this is pretty much an evolution of the Beats not design-wise, or actually possibly design-wise, but I think in price, I think this is pretty much adjusted for inflation from five or six years ago. That's why a premium headphone such as this with active noise cancellation, transparency mode, and unparalleled comfort for a consumer headphone costs this much, uh, from the build quality to the design to some of the features that they have. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing an unboxing and a first impressions, like I said, uh, and then we're gonna stick around and do some audio tests. And I think I'm even going to uh, edit a little bit of video on this and record that for you, and then give my first impressions on what that is like. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this unboxing and first impressions. So here in front of us today, we have the Space Gray AirPods Max. I do keep wanting to call them AirPods Pro Max, but uh, without further ado, it was either this color or silver. They do also come in three other colors, a pink, a green, and a sky blue. I think if I wouldn't have had the option of silver or space gray, I probably would have gone for the dark blue. It's actually like a sky blue color. It's a very elegant looking color. It's very classy, conservative. If we just rotate the box to the side here, you can see you get the Apple logo on the side. And then at the very back of the box here, you can see that you get a good idea of what the charging case looks like. What's actually pretty interesting is it looks like you could easily carry these around. Uh, I think the case that uh, these come in pretty much folds shut, uh, probably using magnets. Uh, you get the Apple logo on the other side, you get the headphones on the front. Uh, on the top of the box, you do get the AirPods Max logo. And on the bottom, you get some other product information like what comes in the box. So with all Apple products nowadays, you can pretty much just uh, Peel the plastic off in this really elegant and uh, sort of organized way. Uh, it actually didn't work well as planned, but yeah, there you go. There's pretty much the AirPods Pro Max here. Let me get this off the table here. And just like with every other Apple product, uh, you should get some pretty awesome sensation opening the box here. But as you can see, you can pretty much just lift them right out of the box. At the bottom of the box here, you do get the standard design by Apple in California pamphlet here. I'll go ahead and just open up this user manual here for you. Uh, this does actually use Apple's H1 chip, which I believe is used in the AirPods Pro. Uh, what you pretty much should be able to do is just turn these on and they should connect right to your iPhone, for example. And last but not least, what comes in the box is a lightning to USB-C charging cable really excited about this. I actually might use this for my iPhone itself because I do have a second generation iPhone SE. I don't have the new 12 uh, or 12 Pro. Uh, as you can see here, there's like a little uh, pull on this paper here. I'm assuming this is just going to rip and it does. Uh, who really cares anyways, right? Let's go ahead and just get this paper off here. This is not a leather case. This is actually more of a rubber silicone material. It's actually 
pretty similar to an Apple watch band, but I would say just a little bit thinner than the Apple watch band silicone. One thing I want to point out about this case here is even though I don't think it will protect it from drops, say from above a couple feet, uh, you will notice that at the bottom of the case here, there is this nice rubber piece pretty much covering the bottom of the cup of the headphone. As you can pretty much see, the USB-C cable is right here, or that's where you would insert it basically. Uh, you'll actually notice that it's this sort of soft rubber material. Another thing I actually want to correct myself on here is these little white cups are actually not for charging the headphones. They're actually just to protect the ear cups on the inside. Uh, one thing you'll notice about these headphones is they actually are a pretty large size. As you might remember from the beginning of the video, uh, looking at the box, it was actually a pretty decent size. They're nicely weighted. They're not too heavy by any means. Uh, they should be pretty much flexible enough. No creaking or cracking as you can hear pulling these apart. These look great. The headphones uh, themselves feel really comfortable. I actually, uh, you'll actually notice that there is no Apple branding, thank God, on these headphones, or else you would probably look like a goofball walking around with Apple logos on your head or on each side of your head. The design is a little bit uh, dull. It's a little bit uninspiring. Uh, they kind of do look consumer grade. These don't look professional grade, but uh, there is the digital crown. Uh, it actually feels exactly like the Apple Watch crown. There's also a button on the top of the headphone here. Uh, let's go ahead and just see how the ear cups themselves adjust here. Uh, you can actually see that they sort of pivot a little bit and then you can pretty much pull this arm out. Sometimes I actually have to adjust one side different from the other. So what's nice is that you can pretty much adjust these any way you want uh, within the range obviously and they'll pretty much stay put and they're extremely sturdy too so you shouldn't have to worry about adjusting them constantly and eventually breaking them. I've actually got my MacBook Air set up off to the side here. Let's go ahead and connect them. They should be pretty seamless. We'll listen to some music and then we'll actually head over back to the iMac there and I will show you a little bit of video editing and I'll pretty much give you a first impressions of what that's like but let's go ahead and dive into what music sounds like on these and how enjoyable they are to listen to. Okay guys, so I think the verdict is pretty much in here. As you pretty much saw, I did try out multiple EQ settings. I also listened to a few different genres of music. I did listen to some EDM house, I listened to some hip hop, and I listened to some rock and roll. Uh, I did go back and forth between the flat EQ setting, the bass booster, the bass reducer, and as you probably also noticed, I did mess around with the preamp a little bit. Uh, when I do listen to rap or hip hop, for example, or even sort of dance or electronic or uh, house music, for example, with a lot of bass in it, I like to turn that preamp up a little bit. If you've ever been at a stoplight and someone pulls up next to you like some young kid, and their trunk is rattling because they've got a huge subwoofer in it. That's because they have pretty much turned the preamp up on that. It's just a way of listening to music uh, that makes it just a little bit more exciting and a little bit more enjoyable. These do a phenomenal job of handling that. Also, what I want to point out is when you do turn the preamp up a little bit, it actually brings the volume up of the headphones past what you might here originally out of the box, you can sort of get them a little bit louder and a little bit uh, more enjoyable if you do like to listen to your music loudly. What I did notice is they're just average loudness. Uh, they're not overly loud. Uh, you will be able to hear your music loud and clear due to the fact that they have the transparency mode and the noise cancellation. So uh, I think Apple is pretty much in the business of making sure that they are not hurting the consumer and you know, why wouldn't they be? Uh, if these went any louder than 100 decibels, uh, they would definitely hurt your ears. They would cause ear damage. Let's go ahead and check them out on the iMac doing a little bit of video editing. Okay guys, what is going on? Here we are on the 27 inch iMac. This is where I do all of my video editing. As you can pretty much see here before I show you why I think having a good pair of headphones such as the AirPods Max is a good investment for video editing, I just want to go ahead and demonstrate for you just how good the built-in microphone is here. 
you can see I'm in sound preferences. If we go to output, we can pretty much see that we have the AirPods Max connected. And if we go to input, which is referring to the microphone, you can pretty much see that we have the AirPods Max connect via Bluetooth here. As you see, the input level is going up as I talk louder and silent if I don't speak at all. So these are working. Uh, you definitely shouldn't have a problem uh, getting the microphone to work. All Apple products connect extremely seamlessly. Also, another thing I want to note here is you can actually control the sound in the uh, status bar up here. You can turn noise cancellation on, uh, transparency on, or you can have the headphones off, which is neither noise cancellation or transparency mode. They do still work in off mode. I have tried it before. And then you can see that they're connected via Bluetooth up here, and you get actually the same preferences. And as you can see, I've actually got 12% battery. These actually have an extremely long battery life. But let's go ahead and get into the video editing here, and I'm pretty much going to show you why having a good sounding pair of headphones is super important. So one thing I like to do, and you may or may not notice this if you watch my videos regularly, but uh, sometimes I do screw up. In fact, I screw up a lot. Uh, I actually do multiple takes sometimes. Uh, so what I end up doing is I'll say something here, like here I'm talking about the arm, right? As you can see, I'm demonstrating how the arm works, which you've already seen this in the video. And then I pretty much cut over to uh, how sturdy these are and how they should be able to pretty much last you quite a long time. Uh, I actually did say something like in between this clip and this clip, but I cut it out. What I like to do is I basically like to connect segments. So uh, if I say something really stupid or boring like I did after this clip here, I pretty much cut it out and just connect it to this clip. And how I do that is I go in real close and I pretty much make sure that the audio levels are the same between switching angles. So as you can see here, the audio at the end of this sentence is pretty much flat. And then going into this sentence, the audio is also flat. And that is how I basically design, or that is basically how I disguise transitions and cut things out and make it look as if uh, I never screwed up in the first place. I try to make it as seamless as possible. Uh, sometimes these uh, waveforms are uneven and that's when you start getting things like little blips and changes in voice increase and it really doesn't sound like they're one in the same clip. Having a really good sounding pair of headphones is super important. Anyways guys, that has been the AirPods Max I picked up using Apple's website for $549. As you can see, they are in space gray. They do come in about four different other colorways, green, blue, pink, uh, silver. I really did want the silver pair to match some of my equipment here, but uh, I think the space gray are fine. Also, I probably would have gone for the sky blue pair had I not been able to get the space gray or the silver, but luckily I was able to get the space gray. These headphones sound absolutely phenomenal. They are not a pro consumer type of headphone where you would want to edit music or video off of them, but like I did say, you can pretty much get away with that. Otherwise, listening to music, these are going to sound absolutely phenomenal. And what's actually awesome about these when compared to some other headphones on the market is they are built out of pretty nice, robust materials, anodized aluminum, stainless steel, soft rubber. The only thing that might not last quite that long on these headphones is that mesh headband here. It's just a little bit light. It's a little bit too tight, I think. I think you could easily poke it and rip it, but uh, that shouldn't really hinder you from using them. Otherwise, these are fantastic sounding and they should last a long time. These sound absolutely phenomenal because I picked them up at the Apple retail store using Apple's website that does make them a convenience good. My name is John. Thank you so much again for tuning in. If you want to see more content like this, hit that like button, subscribe. I will see you in the next one.